So if you're a cyclist and you have an Instagram account, then you've probably seen patches. They've become really popular in the cycling community. Cyclists love to collect them, share them, and show them off online. And in this episode of POP Talks, we're gonna talk with Walter, the man who's responsible for creating many, if not most, of the cycling patches that you're seeing online. This episode of PLP Talks is made possible by the folks at the Art of Survival Century bike ride. You can visit them online at survivalcentury.com and it's an event that happens on Saturday, May 26th and it's a weekend of bike fun. The ride takes place right where Southern Oregon and Northern California meet, that's Siskiyou and Klamath counties. And the event has a lot of different route options from a full-on century to a family-friendly length ride to even a short gravel grinder. And all these rides pass through the Lava Beds National Monument with petroglyphs and pictographs. It's definitely an Instagram-friendly bike ride. So for more information, visit survivalcentury.com. So enjoy this episode of PLP Talks. So today I'm super excited to have uh, Walter from Fall Creek Outfitters. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rush. So patches, uh, just tell us a little bit uh, about how you got into the patch making uh, business. Back in the nineties, you used to get patches and you'd put the patch on your bag or you pat, you know, put the patch in your jacket or jersey or whatever. And I did an event in Pennsylvania called uh, Pedal of the Lakes and it was in Pine Matuning. And I remember I got the, you know, a century patch of course. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. I wonder if I could start doing some classic bike designs because I was involved in a couple of uh, classic bike groups. Mm -hmm. So I started making some of the old logos. Um, we're talking about Carlton, uh, Hatchins, different like ancient brands that nobody has anything to do with anymore. Right. <laughs> so, uh, and there was an interest. So I kept it rolling from there. And of course it went straight into more bicycle oriented patches and then all these different bike culture groups. Um, I think Rob Perks from Ocean Air Cycles was one of the kickoff people and, uh, you know, the thing the ball started rolling from there. So I started getting a chance to make more and more bike culture oriented as well as the regular cycling type patches. And now I branched them off and started making sort of my own uh, different styles too. Like you made our patch, uh, Rob's, uh, who are like the other personalities or brands that you've worked with in the last couple of years? Oh, geez. You yeah. already mentioned a bunch. You already mentioned a bunch of them. Um, Benny from Ultra Romance. Uh, I mean, Benny was a big, you know, he's he's gotten some cool designs. Uh, Eric Sedano from uh, Bicycle Nomad. Um, Rob Perks, Tark's Law, uh, Swift Industries. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Joe Tanager from JPAX, uh, Eli Rodriguez from RaithWorks SF, mm -hmm. uh, Monica in, from uh, Karstic Designs. There's so many. It's, right. it's just <laughs> continuously spiral. And I, it's fun because I've actually gotten to do some more of outdoor culture now too. And uh, I was able to do some bicycle events and uh, made some patches specifically where they'd come to me and I'd be like, well, I'll get you a hundred. Can I throw in an extra hundred in case you get more riders? So that really, worked, you know, that seemed to like work out. And I like it because I get to be part of that community, even if it's, 3,000 mile away and I can't get there for the actual event, I can at least follow, you know? And right. That's awesome. With things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a nice environment. So I'm curious, like, do you have a sense of how people use the patch? Do people actually sew it onto things or is it, is it these days more used as like a keepsake? It depends. There's, um, there's a wide variety. Like I see bags. I think one of the most common things now is because there's so many patches out there and you want to have something different to mix it up. So under your uh, plastic map uh, holder on your rando bikes and on your bike bags, people seem to like that. Because then you can interchange, you know, you can say, oh, I'll take this one out for a while and put in a crust, you know, put in a crust bicycle one here. Yeah. Or, yeah, I'll switch this out and, you know, put in, uh, you know, a lug, not drugs patch, you know, just to <laughs> Keep things kicked up a notch, and um, but I, I've seen them on jackets and jerseys, and um, and you know that actually falls in line. A lot of the older riders, uh, you'll find them putting them on their jackets. You'll find them putting them on, on their jerseys. Usually on the back of the right pockets, you know, in the three pockets in the back. But um, they're everywhere anymore. So I mean, you know, luggage bags, you name it. I mean, they're everywhere. So yeah. it's kind of fun. 
Yeah, for me, it's like uh, I've, I've got a collection and I've actually just put them up on the wall because it feels like such a big commitment to actually sew it onto something. <laughs> yes, it's a lot of work. Yeah. I make my wife do the part. She's real talented with the individual. Like I'll give her to hand sew stuff. She's got, she does different little patterns, crisscrosses. They look you know, really neat and nice. And uh, I actually think I had her do that for uh, a motorcycle jacket I had way back like for a long time ago yeah. so but yeah do you have any theories on why patches are so popular amongst uh cyclists i think they were always popular um i have some patches a gentleman sent me a collection and i have them uh, set up for a display at some point i need to display them properly but they're for, they were for the hotter than you know hotter than hell 100 and different events like that mm -hmm. and there are so many that it's unbelievable so i mean you're talking about events that were late 60s 70s 80s very common events and those guys were doing all those big long rides back then and you know the patch was a key element there's a couple if you did four main rides you got four pieces and it comes together almost like a puzzle okay. for a total picture so you know the guys would complete each section of that ride for that year and get a piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. so i think there was always that interest for the patches it's just recently come out with um bicycle culture themselves and i think because you actually now have the resource where you can say man i want a specific design and i actually i could just shoot this design off and this person can help me so kind of you know, that seems to be a big part too. So you do patches uh, beyond just cycling, but I'm kind of curious about like what percentage of um, your patches are cycling specific. Is it a large part or is it just like yes. a small? Yeah. It's a large, a large part is bicycle specific. Um, now it's spilled over into uh, the outdoor community also, but bicycles remains, you know, probably the high majority, but um yeah, it's crazy because now you start getting them from, like I, I did one for a fiddle shop somewhere, and I'm like, oh my god, you know, a fiddle business. So you start getting them from all these. You know, of course, there's you know the beer, you know, the craft beer designs and different things like that. So all of that kind of runs hand in hand with the cycling culture, though. You know, as the after cycle event takes place and you chill out. Um, so yeah, but most of them are bicycle related. Um, I'm really pleased that uh, so many people have continued to be interested in them regarding for bicycling. I mean, um, you would think it would waver at some point. So uh, right now, it's, it's still going strong. So let's talk a, a little bit about the process because, uh, you know, I, I posted, um, you know, I posted your, the picture of the patch you made for us over the years. And a lot of people, I get emails asking me like how the process goes. So what, how do you usually work with someone that says, I want to, I want to make a patch? Well, uh, most of the people come with a design already, you know, like, Hey, I'm an idea and I have a partial design. Once in a while, it'll be a sketch, like literally a sketch on paper. And I'll say, let's, you know, that's what you want. Let's fire away with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we're actually, I'm working on one right now with a firefighter group. So, I mean, give you an idea of how different, and they sent me like a, a rough in sketch picture and it's like, all right, let's roll with it. But uh, most of the time people come with you with the design that they already have, or maybe it's their logo for their bags um, that they make, you know, and they bring uh, something to the table and it does not have to be very complicated. It can be JPEG, it could be a, a Adobe Illustrator, it could be PDF. Uh, it is. It does not have to be very complicated. A lot of people think, oh, yeah, I have to break it down. Now, you know, you get me something simple. Um, it can be digitized. I give some people some estimates, an idea of what it might cost. And I'll do different quantities. Um, I can make minimum quantities one. I mean, I literally make one if somebody has it. But you know, there's some groups out there. I just made some for a gentleman that um, I'm not going to say what they were because he's for, he's going to launch it. But uh, it was a very funny idea that he came up with on a ride, and he only wanted like 12. So it's like, oh, it's fine. Let's roll with it. And um, and now he just contacted me. I think he's going to need more because he's got some more people interested. But um, and there's some you know different stuff like that. But if you bring the design to me, um, scan it, get you some estimates, ideas. Once you know, you're like, hey, you know what, let's do this, let's go. I just, you know, start the process of uh, setup. And um, mm -hmm. that's pretty easy anymore. 
uh, your computer can pick out various thread colors if you have them loaded up it'll can tell you know it'll tell you what's close to it uh, I always joke around Pantone colors there's thousands and thousands of Pantone colors out there there's about 250 to 350 different thread colors so <laughs> like so like there might be one thread color that matches like 14 to 20 uh, Pantone designs and so it's kind of like some once in a while it's like hey I kind of got to live with a little bit of color variant on this one, but uh, but most of the time, you know, they match up really well, and um, you roll on with the sample and uh, do a sample process. I see a lot of I, I can do digital mockups too, and I've do, done that a couple times. And then once people see a digital mockup, most of the time I do a real sample also. Does the like the computer you work with? Does it have set typefaces, or how does it? treat type does it treat it as like vector or is it are there fonts it's it is basically just like vector it is basically uh whatever you present to me it's exactly what i will do mm -hmm. um i've had people that don't really have a given font but they had actually done it themselves or sketched out and we'll do it exactly like that are there any kind of um design trends that you've seen over the years like a, a particular patch shape or size that that seems to kind of bubble up that's interesting. It, I think it varies. Um, I don't. I don't really see a consistent. Um, you know, you got your various basic designs. Your circle. You know, it's like your three-inch round patch or mm -hmm. four-inch round patch. Got your basic designs. Um, I always thought, I, like every bike ride that I saw in the like seventies, eighties, and that collection of bike patches, I have, they're mostly round and they're, they're mostly perfectly rectangular. I don't see a whole lot of rectangular ones anymore. It's just one, and it's like, no, I don't see any of those anymore. It's, you know, there's more of a roundish design. Cut the, you can do cut to fit. So if you have an exact, uh, actual like design, and you want it to follow the perfect curves of it, you can do that. Have you worked with any uh, tourism destinations? Because I feel like that that'd be like such a, a rich market for like a state that wants to promote itself, or you know. Nobody bit like not a state in itself, or not like um, yeah, not not like a set state. Like definitely, uh, Mulberry Gap Resort done in uh, done in uh, Georgia. I've worked with them. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of racing uh, promotions, and they do that. Well, they have an entire you know acres and acres of cycling. Um, they just had an event there, the uh, Death Revival March. So very very cool people to work with so I mean, you know that's kind of a destination type thing but yeah. um, specifically as far as like a state goes or like an organization you know, not so much so doing patches is, is part of your income like where do you hope to grow it or what do you hope to do with it in the future i'm content with where we're at i've always i have always said that um, i'm not going to retire with making embroidered patches and that's okay uh, it's nice to be able to put food on the table and be able to smile and enjoy going out with the family for a ride, for a hike, for a walk without worries. Uh, I I can't complain at all, and I'm really really pleased with where we're at. I, you know, as long as I continue to see that there's an interest, um, and there's a lot of interest out there, and it, now like you know we've talked bicycles a majority. It is splintering into different outdoor groups and different outdoor activities, and it's nice to see that. Um, it gives more of a variety as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I started very small. I started very simple. I never knew it was grow with you know so much of a demand or so much of an interest, mm -hmm. and we're you know we're happy with that. We don't need to explode. We're mm -hmm. all right. We're. <laughs> you know, Hey, this is all right. This is okay. I, I, you know, I get big orders once in a while, and we still can fulfill them. Um, mm. But I, tr I really think the custom small order uh, batches that people are coming up with and asking for it gives such a variety. Mm -hmm. So it makes it, it makes it pretty uh, keeps it interesting. <laughs> yeah, it keeps. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's a bicycling magazine article about you, you uh, about the patch business a, a while back. How did that affect the business? Um, it was okay. I mean, it, it wasn't like there was a boom afterward, but um, I think it brought more, more awareness to the fact that 
there are so many different varieties out there. I know I heard I got a lot of reorders. So I know a lot of people that were featured in the article, the magazine, um, some of those people started selling through some of their patches were like, oh, I did, you know, I think the day that I went down to bicycling and they did an interview with me and then they presented me with the magazine, they had the art, you know, and they talked to me about things. I said, so is this a go? And they're like, yeah. And I think on the way home, I probably must have emailed, you know, a hundred people saying, you're not going to believe this, but your patch is in the magazine. So it's kind of nice. It was fun to do that. And people yeah. were like, what? Really? And I mean, there was such a variety of people represented in that. So yeah. it was, you know, you had major manufacturers, you had some small, you know, people that did them for fun. And it's like, yeah, you actually, you know, they made the article. It's cool. So yeah, so it was, it was nice to see. I think it brought a lot of attention to uh, many of my clients. And um, we've had the opportunity to work with so many people now mm -hmm. that, um, and it, it's it's fun. Each person's different. Each idea is different, and that's what keeps it interesting. That's what keeps it fun. And within the the different tribes of cycling, is there one that that's more patch hungry than the others, like randonneurs over roadies, or you know, like what's is there like? Uh, that's interesting. Um, I just made one for a roadie that was roadie specific, and it was they were like so like. To look at the patch, it's hilarious to look at the the meaning that was behind it, but it's something that would only be amusing to somebody who is like a time trialist or busting butt to hit a right. time specific zone. So, but it does seem like cycle touring is very popular. Um, biking, of course, like fat biking, bike packing, definitely seems you know to be a very you know very cool designs that they come out with in a variety. I'm curious if there's any. Like you talked a little bit about the, uh, you know, the some three D designs and patches and like the, are there any interesting trends in the patch making world, like glow in the dark or, I don't know. <laughs> so while I get glow, glow in the dark is kind of funny. If you ever remember when you're a kid, you got the glow in the dark uh, toy or whatever, you know, you expose it to light for like three minutes, you take it in the dark, and it's like, oh, that's pretty cool for thirty <laughs> seconds. You know, like, like one of those things, like, oh, that was the best. 15 seconds of glow I've ever seen. Um, going to dark patches are cool, but I, I think my cycling emblem that I use, which is a cycling elk, uh, that's our logo for our business. I always do him in like a glow pattern. And um, it's cool because, you know, like if a car flash, you know, you can see a headlight hit it, you can see it glow for a little while or whatever. But uh, you know, that's one of those things. It's like, it's, it's neat. It's a novelty type thing. Um, as long as you can make it look normal when it's not glow in the dark, <laughs> then, then that's cool. Yeah. But you can because there's a couple different shades of the glow in the dark. But it's funny because it's like as long as you can make it normal if it's not that because most of the time it's not going to be that. In terms of like attaching a patch, um, like some people use waterproof bags. Is there Do you have a means to have like a patch with an adhe adhesive on the back? We do. Actually, we do. We have, uh, we have a, adhesive back ones. And I've seen people put them. I have one on a hat that I put on probably like five years ago. I washed the hat dozens of times. It's still there. Oh, cool. So they hold on pretty well. But uh, we do, you know, there are adhesive backings. There's iron on. Um, even on like a like a waxy finish on the material, I, you know, like I provide patches for Eli from Ruthworks Art SF. And me and Eli are very good friends. And we talk a lot. And he is like a just die hard component of iron on. He's like, look, once you do it, you'll never go back. He just even, you know, and even for the waterproof type outsides, he's like, you're, you're not going to want to go away from the iron on. And that does seem to be a strong feature. Mm -hmm. Now there's some pretty cool things out there. Now people coming out with, uh, I do Velcro backings and I can provide the, uh, Velcro male and female, you know, sides, the hook and loop, and provide both of them, and I can cut them both to the shape of the uh, design. A lot of people are doing where they put a Velcro on a hat, and they may get two different patches the same size, and that way they can enter, you know. That's cool. That's like been off for a while. It's patches for the so non yeah. not for the non-committal. <laughs> after after cycling, I guess what's the next like specific activity that's kind of latched on to to patches? Beer. No, I okay. craft beer. <laughs> It's it's uh, there are a lot of uh, craft beer places, but um, 
it just has to be ba- like backpacking, okay. um, hiking, backpacking. You know, there's a there's a pretty big demand for those out there. That makes sense. I mean, it harkens back to like Boy Scout days or something. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. I get a lot of people saying that also. You know, a lot of people are like, they, they're like, oh, we should start making merit badges. And I'm like, well, roll with it. Right? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, I did a couple designs of my own that were like, um, what I actually considered merit badges with like just a simple tent, the sun above it, or right. a dog paw. <laughs> I always did the dog paw and stuff like that. And those were like specific. Um, you know, those were specific for something totally different. Well, cool. Um, I think I'll end the interview here. Thanks again, uh, Walter, for joining us. And uh, if you guys uh, have any other questions for Walter, leave those in the comments below. And uh, if you guys have suggestions for future guests, leave those in the comments below. And uh, thanks again to the folks over at uh, Art of the Survival Century that's making this episode possible. Uh, be sure to check out their website at survivalcentury.com. And uh, thank you, Walter, for joining us. Ross and Laura, thank you for guys for being very good and continuous supporters and ambassadors of the sport uh, because I, you guys are fantastic again, cycling ambassadors, spreading the uh, spirit of cycling in general. You guys have done a great job over the years. Thank you, Ross. Cool. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. You take care.